Thank you for joining us again. The Cambridge Red Deer Hotel here in Alberta, Canada, for our next match from the Prairie Canada Open. We are expecting a great match here with Alison Fisher taking on from Japan, Kyoko Sone. And my name is Tim de Ruiter, and with me in the booth for this one is WPBA player Ada Leo. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. Yourself? I'm doing absolutely great. And um, yeah, I've been enjoying commentary last match with Kelly Fisher, so it's pretty interesting for me. That looked like an exciting match there. It was very exciting. Just finishing a shootout, so hopefully we can get some more exciting stuff coming. Have have you played in this format before with a shootout? Yes, yes, I have. I uh, played also in Las Vegas and in uh, Arizona. So I know what it really does to the players, especially the shootout. This can be pretty rough on them. And uh, you have played in this tournament. Did you do any well or do you don't, you don't want to talk about it? Um, I actually was very disappointed in how I played. Oh. So. I don't want to talk about it, but I have to go back and do some homework and practice and that's good. really but work on the things that... I mean, it doesn't hurt to analyze your game and grow. Of it doesn't course. hurt. That's okay. what we all players do, right? It Take has notes. to. Cannot always win. Cannot always beat everybody. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Do you see any problems on this layout? Um, well, I'm just wondering, that 310 combination is not really straight and the three ball might not go past that nine. Here we see a replay on the one, not the cleanest of shots and yeah. I think it goes. The two ball still goes, but that 310 combination still needs some work. Ooh. Ooh. And in the background we hear the amateur, the western Canadian Championships played on 35 Predator Apex tables. Have you tried one of those tables yet? Yeah, actually, they were really nice tables. I was very pleased. I was like, wow. Yeah, a lot of people didn't really expect it, but um, yeah, a lot of people seem to be satisfied by the new tables. And here we see Allison Fisher taking an early win. See, I thought that was dialed in right there you're second guessing whether that goes oh no 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 oh mm -hmm. yeah well i mean it wasn't straightforward but Are you a conservative player and an aggressive player no i weigh percentages i, I think that's more the thing so i mean i'm not saying it was not gonna go but she still had to make it work which she did i think one of the challenges here is that back home there is no predator table to play on and this play table plays a little bit, little bit differently yeah, so there's exactly some players that said, well, the table plays a little faster or the reels are a little different, which is normal because not everybody gets as much play on them. Mm -hmm. So obviously we had a couple players that played in Vegas as well. So if you yep. look at like Brittany Bryant, uh, both, both Fishers, well, then you know also about the tables, how they play, but not everybody can get this experience unless yeah, they have played more tournaments. They just have to come out and play in the Predator Pro Series. I mean, I think anyone can play in that, especially on the men's side. We usually have 120 players, 64 players. It's a pretty big field, so. Yeah, there's always room for new players. And yeah, and CSI is um, bringing more events. I just heard that they're announcing a uh, Atlantic City in January, so. Super excited. I'm from New York City. I play out of Amsterdam Billiards, and not having to get on the airplane is huge. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's a little closer, not that much expenses. Mm -hmm. Still a good opportunity to. And don't forget about Puerto Rico in November. I've never been there. You got a beach? You have a pool? I mean, it just <laughs> sounds like paradise. Yeah, well, well, it is paradise, I believe. I really hope I can get to go there. And in the meantime, Allison Fisher is She's cru cruising quick. a little bit here. I think she was fired up from that match from Kelly earlier today. Yeah, I think if you beat Kelly, you get this little boost of confidence inside because obviously I think that Kelly is the hottest player at this moment. She won the last three WPBA, no, 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 the Pro Buried Series events. So that's pretty strong. 
I think it, people are doing their homework, watching Kelly on the live stream and these events and trying oh to figure yeah. out. Yeah, what, what is she doing differently compared to the other players? Right. That's, that's what a lot of players should ask themselves. Like, how can she make such a big difference? And, well, I just did commentary with her and she really does understand the game quite well. Just angles and feeling and there's so much knowledge in there, which was, f f yeah, interesting to listen to. Uh, what's your feeling on the break, though? Because I feel like, uh, or I've seen a lot of the breaking on the 10 ball here uh, with the ladies and they were struggling. I, I don't think that there are that many breaking runs going on. No, especially um, because it's hand rack. They did this on purpose because they didn't really want to have a break run contest going on mm -hmm. with the magic rack. You can barely, you can just hit the one real soft and just go straight balls, uh, two balls in the side. Right. So just to, yeah, have a little bit more strategy going on and the players get a little bit more uncomfortable. So this format makes it a little bit more exciting. But then the break, because of hand rack, mm -hmm. gets more difficult. Yeah. And I think especially for women, because not every woman does have that much power on the break. And I think breaking from the side to make the one is a good opportunity. Versus breaking from the center? Yeah. Oh, and she, oh wow. a little fortunate there. She you know, these high pockets are very pointy. Ten ball here, I guess. Yeah, got a little bit off that 10. I think she got very lucky there. Me too. She didn't really expect to hit that 10 so, so fat. And then she lost the cue ball a little bit, but still cue ball on the rail. Small tester here. Wow, she hit that really well. And is she a little hampered over the nine? Because you don't really want to be queuing over the ball all the time. No, definitely. So could have worked with just a little bit less or a little bit more. But oh, it looks to be fine. One thing about Allison, she has such great form, like her pre-shot routine, the way she addresses the table, the balls, and it's just so solid. Yeah, and this is also because she used to play a lot of snooker, so her technique is pretty advanced compared to some pool players, which are very loose and you know, big strokes. She does everything very deliberately, so that's where the shot making comes from. But even someone like Kelly, who has a snooker background, plays, not, you know, a little bit differently as far as her pre-shot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, everybody has their, their own style. Yep. But it's interesting to see how they cue so straight. This tempo to go 2 nothing, and I don't really think Sony has anything to say in this she first She can't set. even get to the table. What can she do? If yeah. uh, she's breaking and running, basically, here. Yeah, very solid start from Allison Fisher. What do you think of the winner breaks format versus an alternate break format? Uh, I do like the winner breaks still because everybody does get the opportunity as the second break, uh, the second set, mm -hmm. the other player can start the break. So there's always a fair opportunity, but it's nice to have that mem momentum going on because it does go back and forth all the time in this short race. Mm -hmm. So then finally, if you win a game and you can break, then you lose the whole momentum again. But then so you so have the change yeah. of sets here because the second set, the person who lost the lag gets the break first. So then there is a, a shift in the momentum, do you think? How often do you see that happening? Um, I don't really think it affects that many times as, well, of course it breaks one player's momentum, but they just won one set mm -hmm. and if they lost the set they would be happy to at least get back to the table to break so i think it's always a good thing and yeah alternate break makes also longer matches i just feel like there's a some extra mental challenge with this format because you know there is that shift there between the sets and you have to keep that consistency yeah, yeah, in that for sure momentum and also going. if you look at the longer races where people are six two up then they lose their focus a little bit, it goes 6-5, and then it's still okay. Mm -hmm. Compared to here, if you win that first set or you go 3-0 up and you take a little gas off, now you're hill-hill or you lose that set. Yep. Because there's just no way. And the same thing Kelly said. She said, I like to come out of the gate strong, 
hope to win the first so set and then focus on still doing the same thing in the second set because then yeah can easily go to a shootout so look at this funny situation she played a push here now would you go balls to the wall and try to go for this one 10 combination or no no i don't no 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 <laughs> i'm not so attacking no i what? uh I'm quite attacking, trust me. <laughs> no, um, I do like some distance on this. So I would like to maybe hit the right side of the one. So containing safety. Yeah, I wouldn't really like to bank the one ball towards the 10. Even though you would play safe, then if you leave something, there's a 110 combination. Look at this. Did, did she call this? <laughs> oh, and this could be costly here. She hit it a little too tentative. If you're going to go for a shot like that, you had to hit, hit this confidently. Yeah, and I think this was quite risky. And Welcome to how I play pool. And <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> there's a long way to go. <laughs> so there's a carom here, but she can also just, if she makes the one clean, then ball goes. This is to go on the hill. Allison Fisher, the Duchess of Doom. Wow. And there it goes. And she had to take advantage of that. It's just hanging right there. Exactly. So I just feel like if you're going to try to go for a risky shot, hit it confident. I think she hit Kyoko hit it a little too tentative. Yeah, of course. Well, I would think in case I miss it, where does the tent stay? Yes. So if I hit it a little bit more firm, it wouldn't even stay there. But on the other side, hitting it more firm, she wouldn't be able to control the cue ball. So I would maybe give it back, or she was the one that pushed. Allison pushed. Allison pushed. Oh, no, no, so I'm sorry, she pushed. Yeah, she pushed. So I would have yeah, maybe looked for a different push out because it was a pretty difficult spot, in the, my mm -hmm. opinion. It wasn't really a nice safety or something. So she pushed out and Allison gave it back, and that's what she was like, I'm yeah. going to go for it. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Kiyoko Sangne from Saitama, Japan. Her current WPBA ranking is 18th versus Allison Fisher, having her first WPBA event in 1995. Wow, look at this break. Eric, this is a fantastic break. There you see seven in the side, nine ball goes in. I don't see any obstructions. Well, it does look pretty easy, but there's still some work to do. Keep the cue ball on the string, as Kelly said in the last match. Can't really go crazy here. Nice speed. And now just go to the center of the table. Mm -hmm. This looks more like a formality, of course, but I've seen nice layouts before, and then before you know it, they hook themselves or they come up a little short and get awkward. And it's really important to make sure you get those small angles or yeah, have something to work with. Don't get straight all the time because it makes you awkward, stuff I hear, like that. I um, hear from some of the players that controlling spin on this table is very difficult. Like if they have a very um, spinny game that they use a lot of English, they're just like, wow, this table or it was just not used to equipment. And yeah, I really think, uh, especially with the Arcadia cloth, um, this cloth is like very new and it does stay new for a very long period of time. So it still has that slide mm -hmm. and a bunch of spalers, uh, players are in the like in their club. They really don't have all these new cloth and all the new fancy stuff. Like I play in a club where we have older cloths. So yeah, it's tough to yeah practice this kind of circumstances as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a big deal if you have the same kind of setup at home or at the club. Then, of course, you can manage all the spin. But in general, in pool, the more rails you use or the more spin you use, the more tough the shot is. Yep. It's just always in general. Keep it simple. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said in the beginning, it was a really tough layout, but she's playing it very clean until now. Not really a tough shot. Maybe until now, but this looks pretty good. She can still follow with some inside to get some closer to the 10 ball. And then she'll be 
Four nothing. Well, it's tremendous seeing a legend still playing at this level. She's just an idol of mine. Yeah, like I just said, she her first WPBA event was in 1995. Like, were you I born? I wasn't born back then, and she still plays at probably close to the same level as she did back then. Imagine such a long period of time. That's just knowledge right there. That's just experience, <laughs> all experience. And this stem ball to take the first set. And very Light convincing. Wise. She showed a lot of skill there. And we'll be back with set well, two she kept after the break. The, the table there. Mm -hmm. We are back here in a pretty good match where Alison Fisher started off great in the first set, winning 4 nothing, and I don't even remember her making a mistake. And this is, must be quite tough for Kyoko Sone all the way from Japan. And there's way more to come for the players, for the men and the women. Do you know more tournaments for the WPBA? Yeah, we have uh, several events coming up. Um, our next event is Michigan. Uh, that's September 24th to the 25th here. So that's also another Predator Pro Series event, same format. Um, you know, 10 ball with the two sets and shootout. And then after that in October will be a Helena Thornfelt Memorial over at Borderline Billiards in um, Bristol, Tennessee. That's Janet at Wells Room. So we've been waiting to do a memorial event because it, you know, of COVID and everything, it was really difficult to have one. And then after that is another Predator Pro Series, Puerto Rico. And then we finished our season in Wisconsin um, in December with the Dr. Pool Classic. So that sounds like a nice schedule upcoming for the players. Of course, they're not only playing to capture a title, there also has to be bills to be paid because the first place wins 18,000 in this tournament. It's not too bad of a paycheck, I would say. Especially for those that come from far away. Exactly, they have a couple thousand expenses and it's worth it to fly all the way over here. And I think it's super exciting that we have all these international players coming um, to these events and really giving that quality of play here that is uh, so exciting to watch. Yeah, of course, you know, all the 
USA players and after a couple of years you've seen and spoke everybody already so it's nice to get some fresh meat in the tournaments and yeah missed by Sone here she of course is cold She's after that first chair. set so and this is of course pure class from Elson Fisher and she might be able to just mess say around this five and couldn't do it too much because she might have run into the six that would be trouble yeah you don't want to be stuck behind those balls no so now she's stuck on the rail and this is a pretty good tester what would you do in this situation make the ball Get a little bit off that long rail and cut the three ball in next. You cannot really do more in the shot by itself. It's already pretty difficult. See, of course, this shot next is also not a gimme, but she she's, she's still at the table at least. Yes. She's also on the correct side of the ball to get to the next ball versus the other way. Yeah, she can play this. Top spin, maybe a hair of inside. Just to go long rail, long rail to the center of the table. And then all the hard work is done. But oh, and there wow. is a first mistake. She looked real dis uh, well, a little shook by herself as well. She overcut it. And it was just, she focused on that cue ball and is this the first good chance for Sona? I do think so. A nice chance to warm up a little bit. Because even though it's hot outside here in Alberta, it's been pretty cold in here inside. Well, she barely made it in time for that buzzer. Yeah, and this is also something we're playing with we're playing with a 30 second shot clock with a 30 second extension only one per rack per player of course and uh, makes it more exciting in my opinion i don't know what your opinion is about the shootout shootout or shot clock? uh the shot clock i'm sorry <laughs> you're like oh i've been commentating way oh, too long oops. today no i'll be fine i actually like the shot clock format because um it forces you to kind of go with your first decision and stick with it. Um, of course, you have to give it, you know, a quick look. and But sometimes, like, you can get out of your head by thinking too much about your options. And then you are in this undecided and you trying to shoot and nothing productive happens. So making yourself shoot quicker because you have to make a decision, I think, helps a lot of players. Yeah, that's for sure. Some players, they think way too much and way too long and well we've seen a pretty good chance for Sone here after an unexpected miss by Alison Fisher but she no, couldn't make it golden as Alison's on the table now right yeah Alison missed the three ball and now Sone couldn't make it golden it's easy. I feel like the action is happening a little fast here between well we're the playing screens. we're playing they are playing actually pretty fast as well. And yeah, this one actually does need a little bit more attention. She can play either to the left side and go three rails for the 6 10 combination, or to the right side, which is a tougher cut. But then she can just play top right, a little bit of right, and go four rails around the nine ball. Like this. To go around the nine or bump it. Little nice kiss there. That worked out. Nice and smooth. She's executing really well here. Well, it's the third day now. I think uh, she's gotten used to the conditions of the table, how fast it is, and really adapted. Yeah, and in her first match commentary, she said that for like couple of years back she really lost a little bit of love for the game and she is really back at playing again she really found that that fire inside so I'm sh pretty sure she spent some time before this event 
which makes it a lot of e yeah a lot easier, of course, to play at a high level. So it's good I to have her back. I think the Las Vegas was the first time uh, the ladies had this format. So she actually lost uh, in a shootout to Amalia. So she, uh, I think, is still salty about that. So I'm sure that was extra motivation for her to work on this format and work on her game here. Yeah, and she is doing a pretty good job, I think. I mean, she's going 1-0 up in the second set, and Kyoko Sone just cannot really break Ellison's rhythm. She just looks fluent and confident. The Duchess of Doom is relentless here. This is the best I've seen her play in a while. So it's really refreshing to see, like, live, like, what I used to see on TV, right? So yeah, well, she was talking also about her first match. She kind of struggled. She lost to Chen in the shootout. And, and she was really trying to find her game and her speed. And then after, I think it was like her qualifying match, she played a little better. And then at one point, the second set, she played amazing good. She said, so now, I, now I got it. That's what she said. She's breaking from the middle. And that's surprising, but she was doing that before having the ball to the center. But it's just tough. Like, it just really needs that, that little extra, and it's just really tough. And you're basically only breaking on, yeah, on a ball that sometimes goes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's percentages. Like, I do like to break from the side. But it's also preference and good chance here for Kyoko with the one and the two in front of the bucket. Can she get that first game on the board? That would be nice. Well, Kyoko is a fighter. She had to play Savannah yesterday and won in a shootout. That was a very tough match for her. Yeah, Savannah Easton, 12 year old, went in sudden death with Kyoko. It's very exciting. A lot of people watch that. It was a big crowd, of course, because we got the Western Canadian Championships here going on. We also have a small video on the WPBA if you want to watch it. Um, it was filmed. So, yeah, it was uh, pretty exciting. It was uh, very good to watch. And I think it was a nice bump, nice idea to bump the three ball. But with the she ended up with the cue on the rail. So that makes it pretty tough. Here we see the replay. Bumping the three is okay. She got straight on, oh well, stuck on the rail. So now she needs to go back up the table with a lot of spin, outside spin. And that's wow. where she cheated the pocket too to get it over. And These pockets are really unforgiving. I feel like if you are not that exact with your English or something, it's just not accepting it. Yeah, well, she. I had a feeling she just was trying to cheat the pocket a little bit more to get that cue ball out and yeah. That's you cannot thing. do this too many times against Allison at this moment. Right. But still a little work for Allison as the six ball doesn't pass the eight. Oh. Watch she out. She hit that a little firm. She didn't want to be on the rail. And look at that intense focus on her face. She means business. Well, she it's quite interesting. I would be a little disappointed to end up on this long rail as she's going to run into the 9 or the 10. Not really that much future for the next shot and she just didn't really show anybody that sh she cared. Like It was like, like normal. And she's trying to shoot her way out of trouble. And it almost worked. But the 6 doesn't go in that corner. Now we get a little look because Looks like we are going to see another super shot here on the five. Maybe she can draw all the way back on the table. She might be able to go multiple rails. Depends. It's tough to see. Yeah, I, I think this is a good shot because it didn't really have much value to go for it. But of course, she was trying to get the cue ball behind it then. Well, the six ball is a little tricky. It's not in a good spot. And now, K 
Yoko has a good chance here to play the five, banking it towards the seven. You get the cue ball three rails around the six nine. Like this. That's a good shot. Some pressure on Allison Fisher here. You think uh, Allison's gonna jump this or just kick this? I think I, I would prefer to kick this, I think, because I would not want to try to make the jump because then I'm solving the six. Mm -hmm. So she called it in this down right corner pocket, mm -hmm. just in case. But of course she's hoping to maybe end up Maybe the cue ball behind the seven, maybe the five behind the six, nine. And I think this is a pretty good result from where she was yeah. before. And did that six ball open up finally? Because I think she nudged, give, gave it a little nudge here. I think it does now, so now the game is wide open. And I would like to see Allison being behind the nine ball after this shot. Ooh, very touchy shot, very good speed. I think it leaked out. No, she's fine. The only thing she leaked out on is leaving the kick shot using the top rail of course, we always like to stick the cue ball to that nine ball. But then I call still those jail safeties. To lock someone up, exactly. And Allison, she's thinking about putting the nine together with the six. I do like this. Just to hold Sony back from playing well. She says, good luck with ball in hand. You know, um, I saw that move earlier today with um, Brittany and uh, Bean. Bean uh, played a tremendous save, stuck her against the ball, and Brittany was like, I'm going to make it more complicated by pushing another ball up against something. Yeah, it's a really good technique. Sometimes you can kick all, what, all you want, but yeah, you're only going to sell out. And Allison is really looking to just seal the deal here. And yeah, what do you play here? She might be able to play this in the side pocket and go into the rail and give the six a little bump. But you have to be really precise. If she hits the nine, she has a good chance to have the six in the left side pocket. So a lot of good things that can happen here. Go, nice bump. Did she get behind that nine ball? I think, oh, this is quite unlucky. Because of the spin, she got behind the nine and Wow, look at that. She just cannot catch a break. It's unfortunate. She called it in the corner. I wouldn't kick this very hard, because then she might get lucky if she don't make it. She did, and yeah, I think this is another good opportunity for Allison. Sone. Does not have to have the chance to do a lot of right things. She just needs to get a momentum shift in her direction. Yeah, and very nicely controlled. And if she can get straight on this eight by using just one rail. I don't really see her messing this up. As long as she stays focused. Because a little mistake is easily made. Allison's been um, working on several projects, so I'm excited. She's been really focusing on social media. She's doing video chats with uh, Kelly Fisher. So yeah, it's okay, good to see. Very interesting. It's not all about how you play. It's also how you present yourself. And I think especially Allison and Kelly are doing a tremendous job doing this. Also around the tournaments, they take pictures with everybody. They're really role models for our sport. And that's what we need. Yeah, they're very approachable and happy to meet all the fans and encourage people to play pool. And it's just a pleasure to oh, meet them. Oh, and she, 
She put a little bit inside on it and she misjudged that completely. She's trying to stay calm, don't show too much. Well, unexpected. And she started off so nicely in the first set. Do you think she took that one for granted? I mean the little inside spin might have pushed her out a little bit more than she expected. But then still, she was in such a good spot before. And this might be not an opportunity. A window. I think she can cut this and go four rails around the table. Not easy though, because she has to put some spin, some left spin on that. And especially playing these fine cut shots. The cue ball will always bend a little bit more if you put some spin. Oh, wow. she chose to run into the 10 and I think this worked out pretty good. She That's took the gamble, no four rails. Risky. But it worked out. And this is for a 2-0 lead. Allison Fisher, solid as a rock, 2 nothing up, and she is looking pretty steady, just a couple small mistakes, here you see it again, no four wheels around, just cut it in and let's see where that tempo ends up, I'll make it anyway, that's basically what she's saying by this. She's playing very confident, she could do no wrong right now. Yeah, it's very nice to watch. See it again, nice smooth technique, goes back and all the way straight through. What do you think about the pause in the back? Would you pause in the back or pause in the front? Uh, I do also pause in the back, so I do pause in the back. Um, but it's a typical snooker player thing. They used to do this. Yeah, I almost always. Nowadays, snooker players, everybody does it. Uh, yeah, the old school players, they don't really have to do it. They, they don't do it that much. Mm -hmm. Kind of depends, like Ronnie O'Sullivan, one of the greatest, doesn't do it. And then if you look at John Higgins, played 40 years of snooker, or like 30, 40 years, and has the back paws. So it's just preference, but for some people it really works and for others it don't. And I don't think she broke that hard with that, this one. But she had a pretty square hit, making the four on the side. Very important to have that square hit because otherwise the power doesn't get transferred all the way through. Look, pretty good spread here. It's almost like a magic rack. And quite unfortunate to have the six ball in between and leaving the 10 from over the corner as I well. I think I would just call a push and get the 10 out of the way, have it repocketed. Yeah, I, I do mean, like that. I do like that call. I think even if you leave the cue ball in front of that corner pocket, you also have the window for the, for the one ball. So she's playing the push out here. Because it was just dangerous have it hanging by the pocket like that. Yeah, and you don't know. Maybe if you push somewhere and you don't remove it, your opponent makes a great shot, and now you lose the game, even though you didn't really have the chance in this game. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you cannot really say where the balls are going after the break always. So Do you think she'll give it back, or she'll opt to take it? Um, well, at one point, I'm also thinking she should play because at one point yeah she's not getting a lot of opportunities and if Allison is locking her up all the time or running out then I'd rather shoot myself to at least have something to do. She decided to give it back she was like no oh. I don't want to take this. Yeah but I understand it's quite a difficult situation she might be able to bank the one ball over with inside spin to get the cue ball behind the two she has to hit it maybe half ball maybe a little bit thicker like this and it's that one to stay there, and this is a tremendous safety. Wow. So the spin really hold the cue ball in the corner, especially the one ball. She put a lot of effort in that. And Kyoko kicking here. Don't think she really called something. I do like this, just to create some distance. Don't always have to 
play a good safety as long as you get some distance going on. Sometimes that's the most effective safety. I know a lot of people um, have trouble understanding that 8-ball, 9-ball, 10-ball, all these games have different kinds of safety that are effective. And certainly in rotation games, distance is probably the easiest safety to accomplish, or at least the first one to learn about. Yeah, and she went for it and missed it on the pro side. That's how we call it. But because she was holding the cue ball too, she still leaves a cut shot on the one. It's a very, how would you say, uh, is that a low percentage? I can't really see from the same. No, I think this would be okay. Just to hold the cue ball in the center of the table, that might be quite some challenge. She really put some spin on it to make it easier. If she played two rails, it's easier to hold that cue ball. But then because of the spin, it turns, bends a little bit more to the ball, and then she misjudged it. Maybe she can play into the three or the five. Oh, okay. oh. and that's a little bit unfortunate. If she kissed it a little bit more thick, she would have been on the two ball. But she also ran into a ball too, so. She had to. And a little fortunate by bumping that five ball to that long rail. I don't think this is like wide open. There's no. some work here that has to be done. No, that five ball is pretty tough. Doesn't go to any corner. Of course, there's a bank shot, but it's not what we call easy mm -hmm. all the time. So that's why she's taking her extension right now. Really trying to make a plan. But, yeah, what do you do here? She can try to play for the 5-9 combination, but there's some distance between that, so that's not easy. I mean, the side might be cutterable, but it's tough to tell. Yeah, it's just a small pocket, and you also need to get on that side as well, and this looks like she might run into yeah. the 10-ball with this yeah. angle. Have you commented uh, any of the women's matches in the past? Not that many, no. <laughs> so what do you think of the women's events? Is that different than the usual men's events that you might have commented? Um, well, it is, by any means, it, it is a fact that women do think differently around the pool table. Also, the mental aspect of the game is different for women players. So that means that, yeah, sometimes I'm judging something on like how I feel, what I prefer technique-wise, and then a player does, like especially women, I've had a couple of times where they yeah, seem to judge things a little bit differently and they choose a complete different option, which could work for sure. I mean, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just a different way of thinking. And that's also interesting because sometimes they do things which I might have missed. And then, you know, I learn, everybody learns every day, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's very interesting. And... Yeah, I was just uh, curious to hear your observations since uh, you probably have some, you know, exposure commenting the men's game and then now that you're commenting the women's game, like, what have you seen? Oh, and it has yeah. a little different dynamic too because in the women's you can see a little bit more back and forth. and In the men's sometimes you just see one guy not missing a ball the whole match and the other guy is playing bad and the score is 8-0. Like what Allison is doing right here does happen a lot more in men's matches than in women's matches. I'm not saying awesome plays like a man, but I'm pretty sure she can beat a lot of them. Pretty sure. And we've seen her make that five in the side, so it was possible. And now maybe a little short in the eight. Pretty short to hold it in between the ten and the nine. So she can choose to maybe run into the ten, which has to be really precise or to go up and down up and down so four times up and down now to just long rail <laughs> long rail long rail long rail 
It just sounded a lot of up and down. Yeah, well, just if you just shoot hard and go up and down a bunch of times, you'll get there, right? No, Is that I'm just kidding. A I metaphor for your life? No. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's pretty tough to hold this eight. She does, she does a great job, but it's just so sensitive. Slow rolling a shot like this, and she's playing for that kiss on the 10, and oh, she bumped it straight in the face. But did you hear the sound that of her contacting that ball? It was so clean. But look at this, that double kiss on the 10. That was just absolutely perfect. There were so many ways that could go wrong, and she just judged it perfectly. And she is not going to give Kyoko another chance in this game. Allison Fisher one more spot on her way to the semifinals. She's she cannot wait to get on the hill here. Wow, dominating. Yeah, she is really showing herself here, and we'll see how she will end the second set after the break. And we're back. And this match has been so one-sided. It's unbelievable. Alison Fisher has been showing us how to play some pool. And Kyoko Sone doesn't really get much. She really gets so many chances. And yeah, I don't think she can be disappointed. Alison is just playing great. Alison is playing like a boss. But a dry break here. And the 4-7 combination might be the trickiest shot in this game but first she needs to get nicely to the left side of the table on the two doesn't want to have the angle going towards the eight because of the three oh she did a little firm I think it's it's okay. She plays a stop shot there. She can slow roll the three in and have a four seven combination and from there she has to just manage the angles. Well she also has to manage her emotions. She must be frustrated by this point. Not getting many opportunities, but Well, I wouldn't be frustrated if my opponent played as well. Because no. there's not much you can do about it unless yeah, every chance that you get at least at the table, mm -hmm. make it golden. It's the only thing. She missed maybe one or two shots and played one or two bad safeties. Well, I mean, in seven games, 
Doesn't really have to be that much. Could be way worse. So let's see. She still has some angle on the three, so it's not easy to hold the cue ball. So maybe she is traveling. But let's travel a little bit further. And now, because she moved the cue ball off the rail, this combination got a little bit more tricky than it was. Still doable. The four is not going to go anywhere if she makes it. So that's the good thing. She can just focus on making the mm -hmm. combination. Good shot there. Well, our team is pretty open now. And yes, it is. And she's got angle on the four ball as well. She can twist this in. Travel maybe two rails around the five. But don't forget, in the last seven games, she barely got to play. Mm -hmm. So she must be pretty cold. And She uh, looks pretty focused to me right now. Okay. And then she's got the nice angle on the five ball. She is working very hard, even though her muscles must be cold from sitting in a chair. Alison Fisher looking like she's on a mission here. Well, she just needs to get the one rack, and I feel like that'll give her more confidence. And uh, she can just continue with that momentum. It's tough to be sitting in the chair like all that time and just waiting for that opportunity. and. So now that she has the opportunity, she just needs to keep, you know, with her pre-shot routine, with her pace, just kind of keep that consistency and make shots. Yeah, maybe play just every ball, ball per ball. Don't really focus on the whole picture. Just take every ball seriously. I like how she's walking around the table. She's, like, really taking her time, deliberating her options and... Really uh, bit, making that decision before getting down and executing. Rack runners, PC boys, yeah, she has boys, a nice routine. She's going forward here. Two rails. Boys, money, One, two. A little bit off. And she stroke, is a little bit jokers, hemmed by the 10 ball, maybe, with her bridge arm. But she's got a nice angle to just stun over to the other side. She has to climb the table a little bit, I mean. She's not the tallest of players. Like I said, she was a little hampered by the tenon. Okay, she got to the other side, but she is on the rail. This ten ball to take to get her first game on the board in this second set. Oh, wow. it Quite wobbled it's quite a bit, but it goes in and that's what counts. 3-1, still Alison Fisher leading, but Kyoko Sone refuses to give up. He's fighting back. Referee John Lehman here from New York, racking the balls with the Predator arrow rack. We have all Predator equipment here. Predator cloth, the table, the lights, the rack, the balls. Anything else I'm missing here? The bridge. The bridge. The bridge is also Predator. Oh, I have the list here. I, we got the Predator Apex, nine foot tables, and the seven foot tables for the amateur event. 35 pieces back there, beautiful view. Predator Arena lights. Predator Arcadia Reserve Cloth, the Predator Arcos Two Balls, Predator Aerorack Racks, and the Predator Bridges. This light is really bright, but you can see everything, no shadows. Yeah, and I hate shadows around the pool table. And I am pretty sure a lot of other pool players <laughs> do agree with me that sometimes 
circumstances we play on with all these weird shadows under the rails and stuff they don't make life a lot easier a try break from Kyoko we'll see a safety here creating some distance found a gap between the nine and the six it's beautiful and this is a very good shot I like how she used that this wall of balls here to kind of contain her so now she's just forced to kick. Yeah, and I would really like to kick these two rails, but the seven ball is also in the way to get from behind on the one. So she can either kick over the left side, kick one rail, or go from the right side. But if she hits the back side of the one from this right side, there's also a big scratch. So is it a trap? Let's see. I mean, it's not impossible to hit the one, but she needs to come up with a good shot. All the balls are wide open, so she cannot afford herself to give a ball in hand. Ooh. Is she pushing balls together? Where's the seven ball going? She closed the three ball. She made her, you know, quite a bit of problem over there in the corner. You see again, she pushed over the seven ball to this corner, which makes it, of course, pretty tough to get to the three ball. Not impossible, but she needs a great position there. Quite straight on this two ball. I'm not sure if she's going to be happy with this. Well, she's still looking at getting Close. Do you think she's going to try to like break pocket. it up? No, I think she's trying to get close to the side pocket to go around for the four ball. But is this enough? Can she make that three ball from here? Have you had a chance to talk to Allison much? She's a wonderful personality, very funny. Yeah, well, this is very interesting. She actually commentated one match. And she would like to commentate more with us. But yeah, unless she's playing the quarterfinal here and possibly the semifinal, she's not going to be able to help us out. And I never actually spoke to her, so I would really like to have a little moment here. I joked with her that she needs to design big sexy glasses next for the pool players since she's playing, uh, she's um, in so many different um, things such as apparel, instructional videos, uh, now social media chatting. I mean, this woman is in everything. Yeah. She thought it was a very funny thing. Oh, she kind of overdone that. If you look at her facial expression, she's like, oh, what did I do there? She just wanted to go back. Alpha Diamond. And this one. It's not impossible, but she can go around the seven. It's a little tricky though. Doesn't hit it right, she might get stuck over there. Exactly, so it needs the right amount of draw or the right amount of right spin. Whatever you prefer. And well, she bumped nicely and she got the six ball on the side. Clean that up. And from here, it's just five balls left for a spot in the semi-finals. She's quite straight on this six. That's why she's going forward. Leaving herself a little longer shot on the seven. Oh no, she's drawing. She's going yeah, for the seven ball in the top left corner. And she overdone it. And this, this is a little tester because she's always going to have a long, difficult shot on the eight if she makes a seven. And also making the seven. Which corner would you pick in this situation? Well, making the seven itself, I would say, shoot it to the left. But then where is the cue ball going if you shoot it to the left? And then now if you shoot to the right, you're not close to a scratch or anything, but making the ball is also more difficult. So this well, she took her extension here, and this requires some thought. Yeah, maybe if she can jack up a little bit. I'm not sure if she does this. Looks like she might be jacking up. 
No, yeah, a little stun top. But this is very difficult. She got up and reset. This to the corner. Going two rails forward. Wow, that's just superb shot here. Drilled it in, center of the pocket. Yeah, and she's just not scared as well to leave herself a little longer shot. If you're going to try to get really close to that eight, you make this shot even twice as difficult. So now, back on route to win this match. And in my opinion, yeah, I think it's 100% well deserved for Ellison to win this. Kyoko Sone didn't really get much. Is this considered the fastest match you've commentated? It might have been, yeah, I think so. But we still have one match to go today. We'll be at 9 p.m. And it will be Bean Hung taking on Caroline Powell. Caroline Powell. Thank you all for watching. My name is Tim de Ruiter and with me, Ada, Leo. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for having me. And rejoin us for the next one. Thank you.